Greetings out there in YouTube land and welcome to today's video which is part two of our Let's Build the Mystery Amp series. I apologize on the delay since uh, part one but uh, I had some serious problems uh, with one of my suppliers of transformers and it's something I want to briefly discuss with you. As you know I've always recommended Triode Electronics for the Classic Tone Transformers. I really think Classic Tone is the way to go. Uh, for the money, you just can't do any better. Uh, and viewers have been warning me or telling me that uh, they'd had trouble with Triode and I never had until now. To make a long, sad story short, uh, after about 10 days of waiting, uh, I had no Transformers, no shipping, uh, information, nothing, no tracking numbers, nothing to go by, so I tried contacting them by phone and by email, which was completely fruitless. Let me summarize in a chart here my experience with Triode and recommend uh, to you a alternate source of Classic Tone tri uh, Transformers that I think you will really like. It turns out that a place called Amp Parts Direct also is a Classic Tone dealer. They're in Florida. Uh, and uh, when I had no luck with Triode, I turned to them for help. Here's how it turned out. With regards to shipping cost, Amp Parts Direct was $2 less. Customer service, we went from none with Triode to readily available with Amp Parts Direct. Answers phone email, nope, yep. Time to ship, apparently eternity in the case of Triode, immediate in Amparts Direct. I'm, I'm talking the same day that I ordered, they shipped. Uh, and finally, sort of the composite of all these other uh, criteria, and that is, seems to give a damn, nope, and yep. The result is, I no longer will deal with Triode at all. Now, this is just my own personal experience and need not be confused with fact, but I'm telling you that within two and a half days, I had my transformers from Amp parts direct. I highly recommend that you shift to them if you want classic tone transformers. And speaking of transformers, here they are. Here's our filter choke. This is a stout beast. It probably weighs a shade over a pound. We've got our output transformer, just husky as can be. And I think the most astounding at all of all is a six pound massive power transformer. I think these transformers can hold their own with regard to uh, bulk and quality and all three of them cost me a total of a shade over $100 which total weight is a little over nine pounds so there'll be uh, absolutely no iron deficiency anemia when it comes to transformers in this build. Let's face it, no matter how good they look, there's no way that we can accept them if they don't pass the CAT scan test. So here's Jack, busily sniffing. Uh, I think he's absolutely in love with that output transformer. So let's uh, just take it for granted that these babies pass and we're ready to move on with our construction project. Thanks, Jack. When I scratch build amps, I try to keep the cabinet just as small as possible to still house uh, both the chassis and speaker. So I tend to build the cabinets around the speaker and then ensure that there's room, of course, for the chassis and the components that rest on top of the chassis, like the power transformer and tubes. I decided to go with a super nice 12 inch Jensen C12Q speaker that I had on hand. Uh, it dates back to around 1968, so it's really sort of appropriate, I guess, for a vintage type build. The problem being that when I got the speaker, the voice coil had been completely burned out. But the suspension and cone, gasket, everything, basket, the works were perfect. So what I was to go in and surgically extract the voice coil without damaging the original cone or spider. Um, after I extracted it, I installed a brand new voice coil with an aluminum form, uh, put it in, shimmed it to the right height, and then reattached it to the original cone. As a result, we have a completely original vintage 
uh, Jensen C12Q with a brand new voice coil and uh, we pretty well salvaged this speaker from being reconed or simply retired permanently. A 12 inch speaker is going to give us fabulous like big amp tone but it also has big size which means that the uh, cabinet for this amp is going to have to be uh, relatively large. My method of dealing with that is to start out with a speaker baffle that I feel can not only handle the size of the speaker with clearance on the side for installation of the baffle but also have room down here for the chassis and the uh, different transformers and tubes that will be perched on top of it. Now that I have the baffle pretty well laid out uh, I, it's time to go to Home Depot and pick up a, about a six foot long one by eight pine board uh, hopefully straight as an arrow with a real nice uh, clean grain. Uh, also some um, tight bond two glue and uh, some uh, wood dough to, to fill in those mistakes that always happen. Now bear in mind that in my Supro Tremover build I showed you how to build a cabinet uh, in detail and also in a previous video. So uh, I'm just going to go through the cabinet construction uh, rather quickly and show uh, maybe some design changes that I've made to improve it. But then we'll get right to uh, the uh, working with an aluminum uh, plate uh, amplifier chassis and I think you'll get a kick out. Well, I just got back from Home Depot getting the cabinet supplies. A uh, couple long planks. The tall one is to make the cleats. Uh, the other, the 1x8, is to make the sides of the cabinet. And I had some scrap, uh, half inch, uh, you know, finely finished plywood that I'll use for the front baffle and the back door. Also got some tight bond 2 and some. I think the total price came to like $21, $22, something like that. Then using the trusty table saw, I cut out the two sides, the top and the bottom. Next, I cut the inlets uh, for the speaker baffle to be recessed into. It doesn't go all the way in flush, but it protrudes just a little bit. Then this edge will be routered. Next, I cut the grooves along the inner wall of the sides so that the amp chassis can slide in and out. Now it's time to set up the jig on the table saw to cut the box joint notches out of the four sides. Once the box joint notches have been cut, uh, then you coat the inner surfaces with glue and assemble the cabinet. Now I've shown this in much greater detail in previous videos, so I'm kind of just taking... Okay, here's the front of the constructed cabinet. I have not done any routering yet, but uh, I've glued together the box joints and put in some gussets here that will make a whole lot more sense in just a minute. Now this is a, a new design for me but I think it's going to work out pretty well. After I set the cabinet down on the speaker baffle, you see here this is the outside perimeter of the speaker. There's plenty of room. Nothing will interfere with it. This is where I'm going to cut out to expose the speaker cone. Uh, and so now there's plenty of room for the speaker here and I'm going to drill through uh, a quarter inch hole in each of these four triangles. Then I'm going to recess the head of a carriage bolt in the corners here of the speaker baffle where it coincides with those triangles and then uh, put some wood dough and flatten over the head and then let that bolt pass through the hole back here and then put a wing nut on it. So there'll be four wing nuts that will hold the speaker baffle in place. You could remove the speaker then and baffle if you ever needed to in a matter of like less than a minute just by removing four wing nuts. I had to cut this groove for the chassis. It's going to be a sliding chassis that will slide out like a drawer and uh, there'll be more on that later when we get to the chassis fabrication and I still have to come up with some sort of back door. I'm not sure uh, what shape it'll be in. I can put in some cleats here on either side and then just screw the back door in. That will help uh, the cabinet to resonate. Uh, I have to have some vents, of course, for the tubes down in the bottom. I was real pleasantly surprised to find such good straight wood at Home Depot. Uh, you know, that's where the Australians get the idea for boomerangs, I think, was shopping for lumber at Home Depot. But uh, today, uh, if they'd gone shopping, boomerangs would have never happened.
Well, here's the cabinet routered. All the edges are rounded off and pretty well detailed. And here's the front uh, speaker baffle with the recessed holes ready for the carriage bolts. Uh, I'm gonna install it just to make sure it fits right. Okay, here's the speaker's eye view of the speaker baffle and inside of the cabinet. I don't have any wing nuts on hand at the moment, but I'm going to go get some. Let's take a look at the front. Well, here's the front of the cabinet. We've got the recessed carriage bolts and the routered perimeter to match the routered perimeter of the cabinet. Um, speaker opening here has been round it off. I'm working on an idea for some really snazzy grill in here. You know that's on all of my uh, amps that I build I try to put some kind of unusual grill. I've never done the same one twice but I've got a real special idea for this one. Um, but that's about it okay for this part two video. Uh, let's go for a quick ride in a 1928 Model A Ford pickup and get a little fresh air. Well, here's today's featured old truck. It's a 1928 Model A pickup. I had this one uh, brought in from Tennessee. It was very rusty, had a bunch of bullet holes, but it was a fairly complete original truck. The green color is mostly original rock moss green paint over black fenders. This is exactly how it came from the factory. And other than the tires and wheels, there's not many external uh, clues that this just isn't a stock old Model A truck. Let's take a walk around here and see what we think. Um, it's got international truck headlights. I like them because they have a built-in turn signal on the top. Those were running lights originally on the truck. It's got a really nice old 1928 uh, Model A grill shell and a really cute uh, radiator ornament. Under that old-fashioned exterior, though, there's a completely new set of running gear. This is a 4-inch drop um, Superbell axle with disc brakes, modern spindles, all new suspension in the front. The engine is a 1959 Chevrolet Power Pack 283. It's been bored to 292. Uh, basically all original intake manifold, the original Rochester carburetor, air cleaner. I wanted to make this look like the type of hot rod you'd build back in like the, I'll say the late 50s, early 60s, using existing materials. Interior is real utilitarian with the original seat done in the original seat material, original steering wheel, the old uh, spark and throttle handles still uh, move, they're not functional though, modern turn signals, and a nice little handmade dash with all modern gauges and the diamond plate rubber floor. I had to make uh, my own shifter and uh, that's an emergency brake to the side. The shifter, I had to have it on the floor because there's no room for your knees in here if you have a shifter sticking up. I guess people were smaller back in 1928. But anyway, this shifter is pretty crafty in that it locks out reverse uh, and parks so that you don't have any grim surprises on the freeway when your passenger steps on the shift. I finished the bedwood uh, rather nicely. Originally it was just oiled planks uh, and I had to put in a spun aluminum gas tank because the original gas tank was just too rusty. I tried to use it and it just didn't work out. Back up here you see the original tailgate in great shape. You have to have two tail lights now. Originally they only had one. So, uh, that way you can have your turn signals. Looking underneath I had to finish the bottom of the wood too to preserve it. Uh, we've got a uh, S10 Chevy rear end here with uh, 410 gears, <clears throat> so the acceleration is pretty snappy. Uh, airbag suspension, independent airbags for each side, and uh, I also have the air tank. I don't think you can see it back there in compressor, so you have your onboard supply of air and can alter the uh, ride height and ride quality uh, anytime, anywhere. The frame is original and heavily boxed, uh, handmade uh, dual exhaust system, uh, shortened and balanced drive shaft, uh, and a TH350 uh, Chevrolet transmission. Okay, let's start it up and we'll go for a little spin.
going to lift the, the shifter up into the reverse position and off we go. Okay, here we go. Engine's a little cold, so we have to take it easy. But as you can see, the acceleration is pretty brisk. I have to take it easy. This is my neighborhood. Don't want to run over any chihuahuas. Now it's back in the driveway. Well, that's about it for the tour of the 1928 Model A Ford. Hope you get a kick out of it. Uh, this is a, a car that I built absolutely from scratch, from a bare, rusty frame. And I'm really proud of it, and I hope you can share in my pride.